exactly like devotional service of the Lord. In the beginning, the devotional service, it seems like terrible austerity. Oh, you have to follow so many rules and study these big, thick books and chant these arcane mantras and understand this esoteric philosophy and, and hang out with these weird guys. <laughs> yeah, it's really tough. I don't know how anybody becomes a devotee. <laughs> they must just really be desperate after trying everything, you know. That's how I was. I tried everything. Everything that I knew, everything that I thought was a good idea, I tried it. Nothing worked. Uh, I was still suffering like anything. So I had heard of this devotional service, and after some years of delaying and putting it off, I said, okay, I, I give up, I'll try it. And I tried it, and it worked. I got some relief. And I tried it some more, and it worked even more. So I said, well, there must be something to this. Uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy for me to give up my material stuff. I was a musician. I was a working musician in a really good band. Uh, so I, I had to give up my band. I had to give up my music. I had to give up, you know, uh, my beautiful girlfriend from Tobago. You know, uh, I had a, a lot that I had to give up, and it took me a while. I had to give up smoking cigarettes and other things. <laughs> but after some time, after by trying, you know, if you try long enough and hard enough, you can give up just about anything. And uh, I took up this process of chanting, very serious, joined a temple. And even though there were so many difficulties, I persisted, I persevered. And now I'm teaching the same subjects. So this is how you get cured. Huh? In the beginning, the sugar candy tastes sweet, uh, tastes bitter, sour, terrible, huh? if you have jaundice. So in the beginning, the same things that are actually sweet and transcendental, they taste bitter. They seem like suffering. Oh, I have to do so much discipline, so much difficult things. So uh, this is because we're in a diseased condition. See, in the normal condition, the candy tastes sweet. And when in the normal condition, transcendental life is very sweet. Uh, Krishna, his name, his qualities, his pastimes, his character. I mean, the nature of Krishna's character and personality is so wonderful that it's impossible to describe. He is the friend that we're all looking for. He is the lover that we all crave. Uh, he's everything that we want and need deep inside. Uh, but because we're diseased, we keep looking for these things somewhere where they can't be found. Uh, why? Because we're conditioned. Uh, I like to tell the story of the drunk. Uh, the drunk is out in front of the bar under the street light. And he's looking. He's like, it's the middle of the night, you know, and he's drunk. And he's like looking. And his friend comes and says, hey, what you doing? He says, I'm looking for my car keys. So his friend says, well, where'd you lose them? And he goes, I lost them in the parking lot. So his friend says, well, why are you looking out here? He says, because this is where the light is. Huh? Duh. <laughs> huh? This describes everybody in the material world. Huh? They lost their relationship with Krishna. So they're, they're looking for it. But they're looking for it in the wrong place. They're looking for it in the material world. Why? Because that's where our senses are. 
That's where our mind is. That's where our body is. And so we think, if I look hard enough, somehow I'll find it. Huh? But we're drunk. We're in illusion. We're in ignorance. We're looking in the wrong place. That's not where we lost it, so that's not where we're going to find it. See? The drunk is looking under the light because that's the only place he can see. But if he wasn't drunk, he would say, oh, I'll go get a flashlight and I'll look in the parking lot where I lost them. See, that would be intelligent. But because he's lost his intelligence, he's looking in the wrong place. So the same goes with us. We're looking in the wrong place. We're looking in the material body, the material mind, the material senses, the material world. And we're not finding what we're looking for, are we? Uh, you have to admit that first. Uh, let's be honest. We're not finding what we're looking for here in the material world. We want peace. We want happiness. We want love. But all these things are not to be found here. And what we find here is suffering and ignorance and strife and arguments and betrayals, uh, lies, uh, violence, lust. Uh, that's what we find here. This is not where our true friend uh, Krishna is. This is not where our real relationship is. This is not where our real home is. All those things are in the spiritual world. And where is the spiritual world? Like Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. It's within you. And who are you? You are a spirit soul. You are pure consciousness. You are a living entity, a transcendental being that happens to be temporarily residing in this body. But don't let that fool you, because this isn't your home. Uh, just like if you go to some foreign country, like we're in a foreign country now, we're in Chile, and none of us are from here. So we're all strangers. Uh, but somehow or other, we have rented this house, and now we're staying here for some time, and then in a few weeks, we're going to be leaving. And that's it. We're gone. We're not coming back. Uh, similarly, the soul is like a guest, like a foreigner from another land, living in this material body, like a house, a rented house, an apartment. And when the lease is up, his time is up, then he goes away to another place, and he doesn't come back. Huh? That's the situation of the soul in the material body, just like the situation of a tenant in a rented house or apartment. And when he's done with that place, he gives it up, and he goes and travels somewhere else and takes another place. Similarly, the soul <clears throat> when he's through with this body, when his time is up, he goes to another body according to his qualifications. Now, qualification means just like uh, if you're living in one place, paying a certain amount of rent, and then you get more money, you can go to a nicer place uh, where you have to pay more rent. But you can afford it because you got more money. Uh, or, or if you lose your job, well, a lot of people are losing their job these days, you have to get out of the place you're in and go to a cheaper place. Maybe you wind up you know, down by the river, camped out in a tent. So uh, it could be a lot worse. But still, according to your qualification, you change your place. Similarly, the soul, according to the karma, according to the results of his activities in this life, he gets another life, gets another body in the next life, according to the results of those activities. So if I do good in this life, 
then I advance and I get a better place in the next life. If I, if I don't, if I do bad things in this life, then in the next life I get a worse situation. What's good and bad? Well, it depends on how I uh, give experiences to others. If I give experiences of pain to others, then I have to go through those same experiences in the future. And if I give pleasure to others, then I get enjoyment in the future. Usually it's a mix of both. So what is the greatest pleasure? What is the best thing that I could do in this life to get a best situation in the next life? It's devotional service to Krishna. Huh? Just like when you have a tree, you could, you could go with a watering can and you could water each and every